Most of us know the Arctic as being a largely unexplored and very mysterious place. For the most part, we don't know too much about this continent, as much of the land is covered in thick ice or glaciers. So many secrets have been sealed beneath the surface of the ice for thousands of years. However, as climate change continues, the ice is beginning to thaw and many secrets have begun to be revealed. While this poses many serious issues for other areas of the planet, learning some of the mysteries of the Arctic could help solve countless mysteries that have plagued humanity for many years. Dangerous Natural Phenomenon Climate change has forced the natural environment of the Arctic to be turned on its head. While the causes of climate change may be hotly debated, we can all agree that the changes are indeed real. We know that the changes are likely to continue in the future and will only get worse with time, though some of the devastating effects can already be seen today. Recently, researchers who study the Arctic Circle have begun to notice a strange phenomenon. Temperatures have been escalating in the Arctic region for several decades, causing ice caps to melt and snow to become less frequent. Though a change that no one could have predicted has been taking place for several years now. Previously, snow would fall on these regions. This snow would feed the vegetation that managed to survive in these harsh environments. Nearby animals would use this vegetation as their only means for food, though that food has suddenly disappeared. Scientists say that the snowfalls have begun to fade and are being replaced with freezing rain. As the rain strikes the surface of the ice, it works its way through tiny holes and down to the ground below. As it does this, it forms an even thicker layer of ice that stifles all of the plant growth in the area. This has caused many of the native plants to die off in recent years and has led to a lack of food for most wildlife in the area. This threatens the lives of animals like the muskox, which are vital to the region. Back in 2003, the mass death of many Arctic animals was recorded in Canada. We know that at least 20,000 of the oxen have begun to die each year since this catastrophe. There have been several instances in which oxen leap onto large ice floes, hoping to find food. However, they're quickly swept out to sea as the ice melts and drowns out the wildlife. Similar situations have been documented in Finland, Russia, and Sweden as well. Researchers are still unsure why icy rain has suddenly begun to pour down on these countries, but they have reason to believe it's a direct result of climate change. Daring Adventurers I'm sure most of us realize that the majority of the Arctic is considered uncharted territory. It's so cold and unpredictable in the region that most countries and governments refuse the idea of even trying to claim such a desolate wasteland. This means there are countless areas of the Arctic that have never been touched by mankind. However, in the 19th century, there were several adventurers who wanted to discover more about these desolate areas of the world. One of these adventurers was a man from Sweden named Solomon August Andre. He was a big fan of hot air balloons and felt as though they may be the future of air travel. He had been spending several years learning all of the complexities of a hot air balloon and had recently finished up his training as a balloon pilot. In the 1870s, he set his sights on the Arctic and wanted to be the first person to ever reach the North Pole in a hot air balloon. Little did he know he would also be the last. Andre had been planning the trip for many months and had devised a route that would take him across the North Pole, eventually landing in Alaska. He expected the trip to take about 30 days, meaning he would have doubled the previous record for how long a person could fly in a hot air balloon. Unlike some other balloons at the time, Andre opted to use hydrogen as his main fuel source, as hydrogen had become incredibly popular around this time and was readily available. Along with the help of the Swedish king, a ton of money was invested in this flight, and Andre had full support from his home country. 
The balloon was eventually named Ornan, or Eagle, after it had been completed. They decided on a balloon that was about 30 meters high and weighed somewhere around 1,500 kilograms. Andre wanted to use everything he had learned and help out with the construction of the balloon, with him helping to design the control system that he'd be using for the next month. He also helped to create a small cooking station on board so that he could cook meals for himself while he traveled. By 1897, the balloon and the plans for Andre's journey had been completed. He had decided to set sail with a friend who was a physics professor and an engineer. The starting point they had chosen would be an island in Norway. Everyone was hopeful and optimistic that the flight would be a success. However, shortly after the balloon took off, neither of the men were ever seen again. The balloon never made it to Alaska and was declared a lost cause just a short while later. About 30 years after the two men had taken off, Arctic expeditions had become much more reasonable and plausible. Because of this, a team of researchers decided to set out for the island of Kvitoya. The island was a part of the Svalbard archipelago, the same set of islands that Andre and his friend had set out from three decades previously. While they were searching through the island, they found the remains of a small camp that had been set up many years ago. Inside this camp, they found two decaying human skeletons. A note had been found alongside the men that gave their names, confirming that they were Andre and his accomplice. They had created a detailed log that would be left behind in the event of their demise, and they told a story of how the balloon had begun to leak less than 500 kilometers after they set off. The leak was so substantial that they crashed into the icy terrain below, yet they both managed to survive. No one knows how long they lived in this small camp, but it became clear that they were unequipped for the terrible terrain and passed away as a result. They also mentioned that the balloon had been damaged beyond repair, explaining how they knew they were doomed unless a search team was sent to rescue them. What's even stranger about their crash is that we have no idea what could have caused their deaths. A team of researchers claims that they could have been attacked by a polar bear, but some others say it could have been a simple case of food poisoning. Freezing to death is also a very likely possibility. After their bodies were eventually found, they were brought back to Sweden and given a proper burial. Mysterious Tomb We don't know much at all about the people who used to live in the Arctic Circle many years ago. We found bits and pieces of previous tribes and settlements, but we don't know anything about their history or what led them to set up camps in these inhospitable conditions. That's why researchers were left baffled when they discovered a strange settlement in Siberia back in 2014. A necropolis was found and the skeletons of dozens of people were found buried here. An analysis of the bones confirmed that these people would have lived sometime between the 12th and 13th centuries. But we don't know who they were or why they were living in such an area to begin with. The skeletons were found in various states of decay, with some being very well preserved and others being almost completely destroyed. The researchers also found incredible pieces of history such as wolf skins and copper armor that had been buried alongside some of the people. What made the mass grave even stranger is that children were found as well. There were also very expensive items, such as a belt buckle that had been engraved with a bear, proving that this would have been a reasonably wealthy settlement, all things considered. They also noticed that each of the bodies was buried facing a nearby river, suggesting that religion likely played a part in the burial ceremony. They eventually found small weapons like daggers, knives, and a statue of a bronze bird. While some of the bodies were very well preserved, scientists haven't been too quick to assume that these people knew much about preserving a corpse. Instead, they say that the Arctic temperatures likely led to some of these bodies remaining very well preserved over time, giving us a great look into the lives of these supposedly ancient people. However, this idea was suddenly turned on its head when a team of excavators found the body of a young boy 
who had been carefully wrapped in bird bark. This bark was wrapped around him so his body would remain intact for many years to come. This proved that the people did, in fact, know a thing or two about giving someone a proper burial. Experts believe that the boy likely belonged to a wealthy or powerful family. But until we learn more about this civilization, we can't say too much about why he would have been buried in such an ornate way. To this day, the discovery of this necropolis is one of the greatest mysteries in Arctic history. The Arctic Loch Ness Monster Lake Ilyamna is located in Alaska and is well known for the many monster sightings that have been reported over the years. Locals say that several large water monsters hide below the surface of the water, waiting to attack any unknowing fishermen or swimmers. Several indigenous people live in the area and they refuse to eat anything that comes out of the water, believing that it could be haunted or otherwise dangerous. These beliefs tie back to myths that have circulated for many years, claiming a large beast lives in the lake and it has been witnessed by dozens of people. Locals say that this gigantic beast is only seen from time to time, and there have been pilots who have flown overhead and confirmed to have seen the beast as well. Some people even say they've seen the beast in a small river that connects to the lake, linking it to the Pacific Ocean. Scientists have been quick to dispel these rumors, saying that the sightings could simply be of a white sturgeon. Research claims that these sturgeons can grow to be as large as 6 meters long, making them significantly larger than any other sturgeon fish we're currently aware of. However, there's also a theory that a few large sharks may have gotten lost and found their way into the lake, though these theories don't seem to line up with the stories that have been told by locals or pilots. Despite all of these claims and theories, no sturgeons nor sharks have ever been found in the lake, leading many to continue to believe that a large water beast is still located somewhere deep within the waters. For now, we'll just have to wait and see if any more evidence pops up in the coming years. But for now, the alleged Arctic Loch Ness monster remains a mystery. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos.